Aloha. Welcome to Holistic Wellness Reveal. I'm Letitia Sharp, and I'm your wellness specialist on our journey about holistic wellness. In the nearly 30 years that I've been practicing wellness, I've realized over that time that the body, the mind, the spirit is a holistic being. And we need to address every single part of that in order to be able to have a whole well self. I'm delighted today to bring on my guest, Christine Linders, board certified orthophysical therapist, author, and co-host on Think Tech Hawaii. Thank you so much, Tish, for having me. This is super fun. I and congratulations on your show. I'm super honored to be here. Oh, how fun is this? Our roles are reversed. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so um, just a little bit about what our topic is today. Chris, um, something happened to you. You had an experience last week. Do you, would you like to expand on that? <laughs> yes. So I've been building up to the new year for the past three months. I have tried to clear my schedule so that I can work on this one most important project that I've been trying to get out. And on Monday night, I went to get a bunch of healthy food so I could wake up Tuesday morning and go for my run at sunrise and work on my book all day long. And I slipped in the store and broke my ankle. And so everything of New Year's for those that are trying to get in shape or want to clean their house or want to get organized, everything that has happened on my list all of a sudden came to a screeching halt. And so I, yeah, that's what I've been dealing with. It's been a week. That's what I've been dealing with. <laughs> right. So you made plans and then life happened. <laughs> So yeah. um, I want to just really get right into it because you are an expert at the physical part of this holistic wellness. And I'd really like to address how are you healing this hurt physically? What are some of the things that you're doing? And everything from like ICE to um, any supplements or teas or oil, anything that you're doing, just go ahead and um, break it down for us. That's a good question. That's like, I know that's great. That's the, in, the insider tips of like a physical therapist healing her own fracture, right? Well, it takes like six weeks for bone and ligament to heal. However, there's ways to speed up the collagen maturation and things like that. And so I have been doing a little bit of gentle pressure massage and myofascial release, very gentle. Um, every day I'm elevating, I'm icing. I have a, I've had a light compression sock on the whole entire time. And also I've been putting essential oils on and you brought me over a couple of frankincense and Valor and Panaway. And then also something I did before when I had a little bit of a, a bone issue in San Diego was this um, Arnica that you gave me as well. And there's one thing I'm not trying, which is a bone healer. I didn't end up going to the store and getting it, but I've been using essential oils. I've been rubbing CBD on it for the inflammation and the healing. I have some creams and, and it's been it enabled me to not have to take Tylenol past the first couple of days, you know, and if you want to do it holistically, I've been using these and I haven't needed to take any sort of pain medication, which is, I think, wonderful for my body to do it to do it naturally, but I've also been doing a little light isometrics, which is where you like barely like a nickel's worth of pressure on the side of my foot to make sure that the, the fluid transfer underneath the skin goes because you want nutrition to go to the area to heal. And that's what I feel like is speeding it up. Great. So um, were there, what about the rest of your body? I mean, I know questions that we might get are, oh, well, uh, now the rest of me is going, you mentioned having an exercise plan for the first of the year. And, and I know for me, I personally, I find a great deal of release by running or, or hiking and to not have that, um, that would affect all parts of me. So what things are you doing with the rest of your body to be able to keep it going? I have been struggling 
in that department. And so right away, I tell everybody you need to move. Movement matters. Movement is medicine. So Tuesday, I did nothing. Well, actually, I went for a jog before I broke my ankle. So I was happy about that. But Wednesday, I went and went in my bedroom. I crutched in there without putting weight on it. I laid on the floor and I put a band around my knees and I did some like hip exercises. I have these little dumbbells in my house. I did some of my rotator cuff exercises <laughs> laying on my side and I put my legs up in the air and I did some of my deep core work because my back was hurting from keeping my leg up, like in sitting with my leg up. And so right away I went and did that. And I, I kind of did it because my biggest goal is how do I keep sane? Because I like to exercise and now I can't do anything. It's so stressful and so frustrating. I, I'm trying to manage all that, but at the same time, I need to figure out, and this is what I've been asking myself, how do I stay strong? I can't crutch around. I've had five shoulder surgeries, so I have to be still mostly like, I can't go walking around on my crutches. Like a lot of people could, because I can't put that weight on my arms. And so I have been doing those little exercises as little as they may be for everyone that ever wants to do anything good for their body. It doesn't take long. I said, I'm going to do 10 minutes the first day. I did 15 the next. And the next day I set the timer for 15 and it went off and I was like, Oh, I'm doing these stretches and these exercises. I felt so good afterward. I felt really good. That's great. Um, I think that that's a really good point because a lot of times people just, they, uh, they sort of surrender to the pain of it. And then they choose to not do the things that we do that help us get past that pain. Um, and I love what you said about the core stuff. Like the first thing I always do is drop my belly button back towards my side, suck it in, suck it in, suck it in. Suck it in, suck it in. I love it. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> Little plug there. Thank you. I know. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> So um, let's move on to the mental aspect of it all. And what I want to do with the mental aspect is I want to highlight this book by Louise L. Hayes. Um, it's Heal Your Body. And basically what Louise has done is she has studied years and years uh, about what the correlation is between our thought patterns and different diseases in our bodies. And um, it can be everything from acne to foot fungus to a broken bone to um, more debilitating or possible um, debilitating things like cancer or um, broken bones. So are you okay if I sort of work through this process? Yes, I would love to hear you. <laughs> okay. So the first thing I looked up and what she does, how she frames a framework of um, her work here is it's a probable cause. And then she always gives an affirmation. Okay. A possible affirmation. So the probable cause for ankle is, oh wait, where is it? Oh, ankles. So inflexibility and guilt ankles represent the ability to receive pleasure and the possible affirmation is i deserve to rejoice in life i accept all the pleasure life has to offer so um let's just think about that for a second do you resonate with any of that and if you don't i mean that's okay because um, we've discussed before you know some things are great for some bodies and not everything is great for all bodies. So do you resonate with any of that? Yeah, I think that um, you said the ability to receive pleasure and you said guilt too. And I think that um, all my life I have been a people pleaser. And so I'm, and, and I just turned 50 uh, one month ago and one month ago, like yesterday. And so on the approaching to 50, a lot of people were saying, you need to stop worrying so much about other people. You need to stop, you know, like I'm a yes girl. You need to take care of yourself. Say no. If you don't want to go say no, don't say yes, because it's going to make somebody else happy. Say thank you, but I can't go because it makes you happy. And so my whole journey to becoming 50 has become this effort 
to not feel guilty about saying no to something that I feel like I can't add in my schedule because I'm already too full or I don't want to do, or I'm really tired from work and I need to take care of myself and take some self-care time. And so also in pleasing people all the time, it is harder to feel effortlessly receiving pleasure, like you said, without feeling guilty. And so when you said that, I just was like, oh my gosh. I mean, my journey to 50 has been working so hard to put myself first. And I felt like in the new year, I'd taken two days off my patient care job, which puts a little strain on me financially, but I took two days off to focus on me, to focus on my projects, to get out there for everybody and put myself first. And so I, the day before I start that, I've been working for three months to get to that point, I break my ankle. So <laughs> it actually does resonate quite a bit. It resonates. Um, so that's resonates. really, that's great because where do we, I mean, and I don't think that you're too off, like you're not completely off base with that. A lot of people feel guilty about not providing a service or companionship or help, um, whether it's professional or with your family or with your friends or even with your animals, with your dog, with your plants. I mean, I feel guilt about not having my plants watered all the time because I get busy. So <laughs> I really feel like there's a lot of people that can relate to that. So yeah. another thing I looked at, do you have something else to add? No, no, I was, yeah, I was think what you may be going to ask me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the next thing that, um, I wanted to talk about is the bones. So I looked up bones also. And bones represent the structure of the universe. And a possible affirmation would be, I'm well-structured and balanced. And then we take that a step further. And um, bone problems, breaks and fractures, is rebelling against authority. And the affirmation for that is, in my world, I am my own authority, for I am the only one who thinks in my mind. And, ooh, I've got so much to say about this. How about you? Yeah, the rebelling against authority, I think that that's kind of funny because my whole life, people would say something to me. I'm like, well, I'm, I'm kind of like a, a pot stirrer. I always like to, um, I don't like to do it. It's just part of who I am, but I'm a little bit of a pot stir, a little bit of a take a different stance, a little bit of a, you know, question things like that. And I think that, um, I think that's helped me rebelling against authority. I definitely feel that way. I, I don't like to be told to do something just because you do it. I like to be told to do something because it's the most efficient or the most effective way. It's the better way. It makes more sense. So I'm always questioning that sort of thing. And I think it's, it's a good quality um, because it's gotten me to where I am today. I've moved to a bunch of different states and started up own businesses. I have taught all over the place. I've written a book. I've done the shows and I, I love everything that I do. And I think sometimes you have to have a little bit of that, mm to be able to go for those sort of things. And it maybe rebelling is a strong word, but also um, if someone says no to me, I'm gonna say, watch me. And so that's a little bit of rebelling against authority. And I think that's one of those things that you, you mentioned your mom said something to you, like, I just love watching you just conquer the world over and over and over again. Nothing stops you, Tish. And I think of that like as rebelling against authority, people say no and you're like, oh no, you watch me, it's gonna happen. I don't know when it's going to happen, but it's going to happen. You wait and see. And so that's great. Yeah, that is. And, and what I have to say to that is that um, the part that really wrong for me is that I'm the only one who thinks in my mind. Mm -hmm. And if you start listening to the outside opinions and um, what everybody has to add to your experience, they don't go to sleep with you in your head at night. You go to sleep with you in your head at night. And that's the person, that's the being that you get to answer to, really. 
And if that is jumping off of that precipice into the unknown, if that is choosing to build your life around finishing your book and actually taking the time to do what you set yourself out to do, then that's what that is. And rejoice in it, find jubilation in that, you know, find that light and allow that to fuel you. So, yeah. yeah. I love it. And I love what you're doing. I love the opinions. I love the opinions in the head. I think that's definitely a journey that I have worked all year last year to stop letting those opinions of others get in my head and then take up headspace when I can be doing more good with my own things and focusing on my own things. That's been a a process of stopping the opinions of others getting in my head and me letting that affect how I live my life or what I think I can or cannot do. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, again, that's not uncommon. We all do it because there's this stigma that everybody wants other people to like them. They want people to feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. And I mean, in reality, how comfortable are you if you're not thinking your own thoughts, if you're not feeling your own feelings, if you're not living your own dreams. Yeah. So, yeah. That's a big topic. <laughs> so, okay. Now, um, again, this one is Louise L. Hayes. You guys should all check it out. Heal my body. And it breaks it down. And she's got, oh my gosh, such a beautiful um, poem and affirmation at the end. It's a loving poem. And I, I actually, at one point in my life, had it uh, memorized, and I would say it every night before I went to bed. It's beautiful. So, I, for I, no other reason, go get that book. <laughs> I'll go get that book. But one thing you had mentioned to me earlier that I have um, tried to figure out over the past one week is you said, like, how does this ankle fracture serve me? And at first, it was like, oh, it's slowing me down, and I'm like, oh, I already slowed myself down, and and you mentioned this whole guilt thing and receiving pleasure. And it just kind of hit me where I thought that I haven't worked in a week and that has been a super stressor. Like as much as me not being able to exercise, it's a super stressor that I'm freaking out that I, there's patience, you know, 10 in one day that I'm not there for. And that guilt that I have definitely felt and also almost went to work early on a fractured leg because I felt like, well, maybe I can crutch around. Well, maybe I can roll around on the stool. And definitely the biggest challenge in this, these, less, these next seven days, and it kind of culminated this morning when I woke up and didn't feel guilty that I'm not back to work till Thursday, but I have felt guilty these seven days. And I feel like this ankle fracture has served me well as far as it's okay to take care of me. And I think we're talking about holistic wellness. It's okay to take care of me. I'm the most important person. And if I don't take care of me, I can't take care of you. And that I've been a physical therapist for almost 30 years. And here I am, like, for one of the first times saying, it's okay to take care of me and not feel guilty about healing my body so I can help everybody else heal their body. It just punched me in the face this morning. (laughs) And I think what you're speaking to there is also that um, not only are you taking care of you, but that's that spiritual aspect of it, right? You're being divinely cared for Mm -hmm. and always coming back to that. A lot of people think spiritual, they think um, it has to be super esoteric or they have to be an expert meditator. We've talked about this before. That's, you know, a big pill to swallow and, um, or they think they have to, you know, go to church or something like this. And, and really, honestly, what it is, is sinking into your knowing that you are divinely cared for. And that starts inside that starts with yourself. That starts here in your actual home, which is this being that you create this avatar that (laughs) you're in here. So, um, yeah, And how did you, I mean, just out of curiosity, like, how did you get to that? Because that's the next step, right? Like, it's easy to talk about, oh, 
you know, how does this serve me? And that's my spiritual side of it. But how did you actually get to that? Like, how did you get to what the spiritual side was? Um, well, I mean, I do, I do meditate and, um, exercise to me is a form of meditation. And definitely I've been lacking that going to the beach in this beautiful world that I've been blessed to be in and listening to a meditation and the ocean and the sun and and everything like that. I haven't had that. And so I got back to my meditations and, and that does help to clear my mind. But I've also taken some time to think about it in my frustration and in my stress of like, Friday morning, I, I was like, told someone, I said, you know, what? I'm right here. Like if I bump my elbow, I'm hitting my threshold. I'm super frustrated. I had all this stuff to do this week. And now all I've dealt with is this injury, phone calls, rescheduling my life. And I was super frustrated. And then I thought, what, what am I getting out of this? There's gotta be something. There has to be something that I'm getting out of this. Cause this week has just been a waste of my time, you know? And Having reflected on that and now I'm into the next week and obviously I'm, I'm feeling better. Uh, doing the meditations has helped and doing breathing and speaking with friends that I haven't had time to talk to because I'm usually working. That has helped me to find that, that, um, that, that purpose of this happening. And I do feel contentment in it. And I, and but it took me a week to figure it out. Not really that long in yeah. the big scheme of things, Chris. Give I'm yourself. glad I did. I'm glad I did. Honestly, I'm glad I did because I could have just sat here and been frustrated and upset. And I just kept telling myself, I don't want to feel this way. I want to feel calm and I want to feel content in my situation. And so I have been working on myself so that I, I'm the only one that's paying for frustration in my mind and so I'm trying to find the calm and joy in where I'm at right now and yeah I'm proud of myself (laughs) I am proud of you too and I mean I also heard a couple of nuggets in there too that you were talking about the nature I mean nature always brings me back nature breath um meditation connecting with that um kind of that higher consciousness right? So those are the ways that I get into my spiritual um, self. And it's different for everybody. Again, you know, it's, and it's about finding your own holistic hacks, so to speak. You know, you want to find your own hacks that get you into where don't take mine. You can share mine if that's yours as well. And at the same time, don't, you know, copy you know, really sit with it and find out what feeds you, what nourishes you, what nourishes your soul, what nourishes your, your heart, what nourishes all of you, your body, your mind, your, and and you started speaking about emotions too. So we have emotions that need to be healed as well. And one of the things that is really important to me with the emotions, like you're saying, oh, you had the frustration, you had Um, the guilt and and things like this. And it sounds to me, and please correct me if I'm wrong, that you are coming to a place of peace with those things, which means that you are not only accepting that they're there, but you are also learning how to love them. Mm -hmm. And I like to think that there's four steps. So you accept it, then you love it, then you release it, and then you replace it with something higher vibration, with a different frequency that you are now more attuned to. So it sounds like you're in the loving stage of your um, of your emotions. And the next step is just to release it and then um, find that high frequency vibration that you can just start filling yourself back up with. Yeah, I think I woke up this morning and that was the first uh, the first morning that I felt different in the loving it because yesterday I was feeling guilty mm-hmm. about 
not being at work and not being there. And I'm, I'm going back on Thursday, but I was feeling guilty in it and fi- trying to find a way that I can get back up. And this morning is the first day that I woke up at, at peace in it. And I didn't know why until, you know, we're talking about this now. Uh, and I think it's amazing though. I think it's amazing. I think it's important for us to find the, find the purpose in things like that because it opens up for me it opens up a different perspective on a situation that when I was in my twenties and I was injured, I was just upset. You know, I was just, it's not fair and not again. I've had so many injuries and I've been there. Everybody that knows me knows that. And oh my gosh, again, now I just have this and this and this. And I, I kept telling myself last week, I'm not letting myself go down that road. And every time I had a thought like that, I just, I shifted it. I was listening to yoga music and, but I, it's so easy to go down that road, but I just didn't, I just, I couldn't let myself go down that road now that I'm the wiser. <laughs> I need to be my best self and change those things so that I can enjoy the voices in my head instead of letting them bring me down. I love it. <laughs> well, um, it's been an absolute delight having you today and talking to you on the show and Um, I just want to touch base with some of the things that we went over. Um, One thing was the things that we can really put into the tips and the tools and the techniques that we can really put into action to help heal a hurt. And what those would be would be, you know, getting into your breaths, going into a meditation, um, doing exercises that might be isolated exercises or something like that that don't affect the broken area, but something to keep yourself moving. Um, Listen to great music. You just brought that one up. That's good. Sing. These are all things that you can do that will bring you back. Connect with friends that maybe you haven't had a chance to be able to connect with and be able to rekindle those feelings of community. It's just been a joy to be able to have this show today and I look forward to bringing you more revelations and reveals on holistic wellness in the future. Thanks again to all of our donors and um, Think Tech Hawaii and sponsors and Christine, absolute delight. Mahalo. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.